Is Dalvin Cook coming to the Miami Dolphins? We're talking about all that and more on today's episode of Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is former NFL scout Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at WilliamsonNFL. Matt, I'm on location this week. We're, we're mixing things up down to Disney World with the fam, but uh, I, I had to jump on here and talk some Dynasty with you. <laughs> Dalvin Cook is, is finally free. We're talking Miami Dolphins today as we continue our buy, sell, hold series team by team, looking at every single team in the NFL. We're through the NFC. We're on to the AFC uh, and, and we're talking about the Dolphins today. So Matt, it, it feels weird to start with a guy who's not even on this team, but uh, the player I, that I pegged as my buy from this, from this Miami Dolphins team could have his, his value decimated if Dalvin Cook does sign with the Dolphins. I'm, I kind of like Raheem Mostert. He's down at RB56, mm. basically free in Dynasty Leagues. Uh, of course, the, this team added uh, Devon A-Chain in the draft, and they're rumored to be interested in Dalvin Cook. So what are you doing with this backfield in Miami, and do you expect Cook to be a Dolphin at this point? So first off, how about the dedication from Ryan McD? I mean, from, <laughs> from Florida, we're going to talk about a Florida team. Send the fam right. to the pool. I got work to do. You know, I mean, I, I love it. Dedicated. <laughs> uh, I am going to be in Hilton Head next week, so I'm not sure if I'll be as dedicated or not. We'll figure that out down the road. Um, I think there's a strong chance he's a Dolphin. However, yeah. I mean, he's from Miami. There's not a lot in his way in terms of competition. They are very, very much a win-now team, which I want to touch on for a second here, too. But if I'm Buffalo with his brother or Kansas City, mm. I mean, probably could come up with a couple others, maybe even a Dallas. Tampa is not super attractive, but it's in Florida. Uh, I right. don't know that, you know, that it's a slam dunk, because I think some other teams might have something to say about it. And Buffalo could block their AFC East opponent, you know, too, by giving him a little something extra or whatever. But real quick, I mentioned the Dolphins in it to win it. You know, they're they're yeah. trading first round picks for Bradley Chubb and spending money on Jalen Ramsey and highly aggressive. But I think it's a little fragile. I mean, I think their quarterback, Tua, is fragile. Uh, he's about to get paid mm. or hopefully he can stay on the field. But Tyree Kills already said, hey, I'm not going to play a whole lot longer. Like, this thing could fall apart. It could be wonderful for a year or two, but it could fall apart if they don't, you know, reach their goal. That's true. It really feels like a team, and we'll get to all these all these key pieces of this Miami uh, roster, but it really does feel like a team that is very boom bust. You know, wide yeah. range of outcomes uh, could could surprise and win the NFC or the AFC uh, East, or or could everything could fall apart. As you as you suggest there, uh, the running game, like I said, I mean, I think Mostert right now is a, a pretty easy buy, pretty easy target. Yeah. Again, very, very cheap. They have already added Devon A. Chain. We'll talk about him soon. Um, and, and and Cook would certainly kill the kill the Mostert value. But mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. Cook is I mean, people are totally giving up on Dalvin Cook. I mean, his ADP. And his trade value is is just gone, and uh, of course, part of that has to do with uh, getting his release from from the Vikings. But uh, I mean, this is a guy who was still productive last year. Had four yeah. RB one games, um, a, a half dozen other games as an RB two, and um, finished, you know, finished as a as a top twelve, top fifteen back on the season, and. Uh, I mean, if you're a contender, it, this feels like a good guy, whether he lands with the Dolphins or not, feels like a good uh, target to uh, kind of bridge the gap between some of these other running backs and, uh, and, and the current time, you know, the current season as you're contending. Yeah. I mean, 
You sound like you're you're one of those that's giving up on him. No, I, what I what I do want to say because I've said this on a lot of outlets is from that draft class, I thought Cook and especially Joe Mixon's tape, not production necessarily, just tape took a step backwards, which is certainly a red flag at their age with the wear and tear they've had. You, I didn't you're think talking about this past season? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, in, in 2022. I didn't think they were as good of football players to me. Mixon more so than Cook. And I think Cook was better than Mixon even on his best day to begin with. But, man, I mean, if he lands here or Buffalo, I mean, or Kansas City, I mean, no one's going to be – focused on them i mean some of these landing spots are pretty damn sweet to me as in miami's at the top of that list yeah. so if we treat this like redraft like we always say to do with the running back mm-hmm. i want dalvin cook you know like i own him in a league or two and i'm not gonna dump him for nothing i'm gonna start him wherever he lands and live with it well you know we talked a lot last year about this miami dolphins team specifically their backfield their running game and as M- mike mcdaniel came over with with kind of that 49ers uh, offensive scheme in place uh, I, I remember you saying and i've referenced it several times whoever the running back is on this team <laughs> yeah that you want that guy right whether it's dalvin cook raheem mostert devon a chain whoever it might be you want them and uh with that was last year at this time you know and nobody good landed there (laughs) but Mostert and and even Jeff Wilson were still you know we're still pretty effective right I mean they're not they're not RB1s or anything but if you've got to start them uh, on a bye week or if they're your flex you could be worse off um thinking about last season now of course lots of things could change as we enter 2023 um Matt so Raheem Mostert was my buy, and I know you kind of went a different way, and we'll talk about mm-hmm. that guy or those guys in a moment. Let's let's list the players here that we're really talking okay, about. Because I got some more. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It, yeah, in in order of value based on uh, this is actually May ADP from DLF. We'll have that June ADP updated very soon. Um, from Dynasty League Football, Jalen Waddle, wide receiver six, Tyree Kill, wide receiver fourteen. Devon A. Chain, the rookie running back, RB28. Tua Tungavaloa, quarterback 14. And then a major drop off. We get down to Raheem Mostert, RB56. Jeff Wilson, RB69. And Elijah Higgins, the rookie. Uh, they moved him from wide receiver to tight end already. He's tight end 38. So uh, I like taking a chance on Mostert. Or, like or Dalvin it. Cook, if he's on this roster, mm-hmm. or honestly, even if he's not. Uh, who is your buy? Which player or players are you targeting uh, in trade from this Dolphins roster? Real quick, because I find this funny because you just referenced it. I mean, after when, when McDaniels got hired, I remember vividly saying, whoever their running back is, I want him. I mean, I, yeah. that guy's going to be on my team. And you're right. And I really like your call of Mostert as a buy, especially at this price. And with the, the cook uh, conversation looming probably even helps that makes it even easier, but nobody landed there that I loved, but they still showed this offense is going to be running back friendly. And even though they didn't run a ball a ton. And then this year I said, I want nothing to do with Devon, Devon a chain unless he ends up with the dolphins. <laughs> and oh, so okay. he ends up with the dolphins but he's still my sell. I, I think the love has just gone too far. Like, I'm sure you're through most of your rookie drafts. Yeah. A, and, I, you know, the, the, I'm often picking 10, 11, 12, because we're good at what we do. A, and I'm <laughs> always thrilled when A-Chain goes 8, 9. You know, I, I understand that that's different than being running back 28, and this is not a great rookie class, but – there's a lot of love for him out there right now, even with the cook stuff swirling and he's just too little for me. I'm sorry. You know, that's, there's a reason I didn't like him unless he ended up in Miami. And even if he landed in Miami, I still think the love is too strong. Well, and I do think it says something and, and they're all, it's all just rumors still at this point, but it does right. say something that even after adding a chain, there's still this connection or supposed connection between the dolphins and, Dalvin Cook. Sure. Um, so sticking with Devon A. Chain, checking out the trade finder at DLF, there's there's a lot of trades, first of all, involving A. Chain. So even though um, Dynasty managers just got this guy on their roster, he's been involved in 
quite a few trades. Most of them are, are package trades, but there's a couple of interesting ones here where he's kind of on his own. Devon A. Chain for Rashad Bateman and Alec Pierce. So you're giving A. Chain oh. for Bateman and Pierce. What do you think of that one? Those are two of my favorites. I'd do it straight up for Bateman and I like Pierce a lot. I think I'll take the wide receivers there as well. When you're talking about rookie ADP with uh, with A chain, you're looking at a it's somewhere in that late first, early second round range of single quarterback leagues, um, and and certainly later than that, obviously in super flex or in that early second round range. So that's to get Bateman and Pierce for that price. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, here's one, and these picks are. are uh, are, are far out here, but Devon A. Chain for a 2026 first Whoa. and second rounder. I, you know, my leagues, you can't trade picks that many right. years out. So I, I don't necessarily really think about, uh, think about picks, you know, three years out. And um, we have no idea what that 2026 draft class will look like, if it'll be strong, strong or weak, but uh, I was about general. to make a joke. You know, is anyone raving about the 2026 running back class yet? Or it's the best quarterback class we ever saw. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll yeah, know soon, one. I guess. <laughs> I guess 2026 would be what? That would be That's three. Uh, I mean, incoming they're, they're, freshmen? Some of, those, some of those guys are finishing high school. Yeah, I But I guess I want the picks. I mean, if I can get a future first for H.A. and I'll take it. Even if a first and a second, yeah. Yeah, right, um, right. Okay, here's one that we can wrap our head around a little bit better. Devon A. Chain for Roshan Johnson and a future second, a next year second. Mm. That's fair. I yeah. mean, I have, they're not that far off on my rookie running back ranks, but I think you could do better for A. Chain, to be honest. Yeah. There, uh, and then one more A. Chain for uh, a future second. That's, that's just kind of kicking the can down the road a little bit. Uh, there as you you probably play, paid about that for a chain anyway right right so we kind of talked uh miami backfield we still got to talk about these these quarterbacks and uh, specifically obviously Tua tunga valoa and the elite wide receivers on this dolphins roster we will do all of that next Make your way to FanDuel because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's a lot of money, folks. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So FanDuel's got it going on. I mean, they got promotions for you every day. It's a very safe and secure app that's unbelievably easy to operate and use and quick and easy. You get paid immediately, which is uncommon in this this field. And there's no better place to bet no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. They have everything you want you're looking for too. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on, all one word, and get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. We're talking Miami Dolphins buys, sells, and holds. Uh, Earlier, I told you that I am targeting Raheem Mostert. I will still be targeting uh, the veteran running back in this backfield. Uh, If this team does indeed land Dalvin Cook, as has been rumored lately, uh, Matt went the other way on the backfield. He wants to move off of Devon A. Chain and sell him. Worried about mm-hmm. the size. Worried about the uh, the hype with A. Chain. So Matt, tell us. Let, let's take a step back. Tell us which player you are buying from this team. The quarterbacks, and it's, yeah. of course, this is more super flex related. Um, I think Tua is a f- perfect fit for this offense, and they build it around his strengths extremely well. We know that his stock is low and it's all based on durability, but his production is proven to be really, really strong. And I think some of the injury scares have probably gone a little overboard and we'll really know if they extend him or how they treat his contract. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't love Mike White, but I don't really care. I don't love Tua either. I love that they went and grabbed Mike White, who's a quick processor, also fits the scheme, good after the catch type of thrower right at the beginning of free agency. They targeted him. They got him. And just like the Niners, I really don't care if it's Darnold, Purdy, Lance, Tua, White. I'm just trusting the scheme. I just want their quarterback. And you can get them pretty reasonable. Yeah, certainly, Tua, the price has come down. I mean, part Mm -hmm. of that, I think, is these 
these three rookie quarterbacks coming in, Richardson, Bryce Young, and, and Stroud, uh, those those guys have somewhat pushed Tua down a little bit because I think they're probably all in the same tier right now. But of course, a, a lot of the the other reason for the drop in value is the concern about these concussions, the injuries, and if if he's ever going to be the same again. He did have sure. his best season last year as a pro, averaged over 20 fantasy points for, per game, uh, finished as the quarterback 14, even though he missed uh, four, ga- four complete games plus uh, portions of others. Still finished with six games as a quarterback one and uh, five other games in that quarterback two range. So uh, when he was on the field, was was very, very productive. You know, I, I mentioned Tua here in, in my list as well, but I had him in that hold range right. simply because of the concern about the injury. I'm I'm not necessarily ready to go out and buy him because in those super flex leagues, the price is still going to be high. I mean, anytime you're talking about uh, a young quarterback who has produced like he has, especially last season, you're not, I don't think you're going to see much of an injury discount uh, on Tua in, in those super flex leagues. So, uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm certainly not ready to panic sell him either. So I had Tua as a hold. I like the way you framed it, that uh, if you're getting Tua and the insurance and Mike White, who played pretty well when given a chance with the Jets last year, that makes a lot of sense if if you have room for the pair uh, of quarterbacks there. So I, I, I like that. I mean, ultimately, this is a guy who's throwing to Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell and mm-hmm. is coached by – you great know, mind. One, yeah, one of the great offensive minds in the game, or or at least one of the rising uh, offensive minds in the game. So there's there's a lot of reasons to be excited about Tua, and really the only concern I think at the point is the concussion history and um, the uncertainty that it brings. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, we've done shows for a long time now, and many shows, and I don't think we've talked in detail about our philosophy on handcuffs for quarterbacks in super flex. But I think it goes without saying this would be one of the top ones for sure in white. Yeah, that, that is a good topic. Um, I'm actually, I think I talked about it uh, a couple weeks ago, I'm finishing up a startup draft with quite a few folks in the, uh, in the space, in the industry. Um, this is part of the Kings classic that we'll do over in Canton during the, oh, cool. uh, during the FF Expo, but we're doing the startup now. We'll do the rookie draft uh, once we're there in Canton in, in uh, August. But uh, yeah, I, I drafted, I forgot where I was going with that for a moment. I drafted Jalen Hurts early in the draft in round one. And uh, it, with one of my last picks, grabbed Marcus Mariota. And, I, you know, I don't have yeah. high hopes for Mariota, Mariota at, at this point, for sure, like, like everyone else. But he's the Eagles backup. And uh, having that insurance, especially for your top guys, I think is, is a pretty wise and, you know, typically a cheap investment. Mike White's going to be very cheap. Mm-hmm. I, to it, not so cheap. I'm looking at some no, of these trades. Sure. These are all from Superflex, uh, Superflex League. So you can kind of gauge the value here. Tua for Christian Watson and a second. I'll take the quarterback there, even though I'll I'm a big Watson fan. As well. yeah, 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 I want the quarterback. Uh, Tua for Daniel Jones and DeAndre Swift. Very fair. Do you see? I, do you see much of a gap between Tua and Jones at this? That's point? That's what I was about to say. I mean, his yeah. running narrows that gap very quickly. Now he's got better weapons. Uh, I think they're really close. So, I probably would take Swift as the cherry on top. Here's one where I would be selling Tua pretty easily, in fact. Tua, DK Metcalf, and Kendra Miller. You get all three of those pieces for Joe Burrow. No, oh, give me Burrow. Yeah, me. Burrow Burrow pretty easily. Let's find one more good one. Yeah. Uh, Tua for a, a, well, a t- Tua for a first and a second. I think that's, that's probably right, kind huh? of the, yeah. yeah, that's kind of the going right. That's about what you would expect to pay. Uh, and honestly, if you can get Tua without giving up, a quarterback, which we saw in a couple of those deals. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's the way to do it. Like, would you give up car in a first for Tua? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, 
you know, we've, we've already talked Derek Carr, but I think there's mm. ceiling concerns with, with Carr. I mean, no really, in, in a lot of ways, from a fantasy standpoint, they're the complete opposite, right? I Absolutely. mean, Tua has the high ceiling, but he's not necessarily reliable in that we're, we're worried how long his career lasts. And mm-hmm. Derek Carr feels like he'll be around for the next decade, putting up 16 fantasy points a game. I do so, wish Tua ran a little bit more. I mean, there's very oh, yeah. little rushing production, but... If he did, I would even be more afraid that he'd get hurt. Yeah. We still need to talk about these wide receivers. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, uh, the top names on this team. We'll do that next. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Every dayers, come back tomorrow. We'll be talking about the New England Patriots, and you're going to be shocked how many players they have getting drafted in our latest DLF ADP. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Matt, today we are talking Miami Dolphins. And we've talked about the backfield. We've talked about Tua and and his risk. We both like investing in him him, uh, at his current cost. And based on that upside, let's move over and, and talk about these wide receivers because they're certainly two of the most electric and exciting players in the game. Uh, again, Jalen Waddell is the wide receiver six, Tyree Kill, the wide receiver 14. This team does not have another uh, wide receiver drafted in DLF uh, ADP. Mac, off the top of your head, can you name the Dolphins wide receiver three? <laughs> is it Wilson it, still? Uh, it is Cedric Wilson. Cedric yeah, Wilson, yeah. They, signed, uh, they signed Robbie Anderson, uh, now known yeah. as Chosen Anderson. Uh, they've got Braxton Berrios. They've yeah, got yeah. Uh, some other guys you probably never heard of. River Craycraft. Hey, you can't can't forget about him. <laughs> Needless to say, they've got the two superstars in uh, in, in Tyreek and Waddle, and then not much else. We can we can expect those two guys to see all the targets they can handle. So when it comes to Tyreek and Waddle, and, and maybe the answers are different here, but uh, what are you doing with them from a dynasty standpoint? Buy, sell, or hold? I cheated and put them both as a hold. Okay. Um, yeah. I would entertain offers for Waddle, big, big offers if I owned him. Um, I think Tyreek's has scared people off saying, I think his words were, hey, I'm going to play two more years. But, I mean, his yards for route run and every metric you can see last year was ridiculously good, and I can't believe it won't be for the next year or two. I have slight concerns that if Tyreek moves on you know, two years from now, is Waddle still under contract? Is he able to be the workload guy Tyreek is? But okay. I want them both, and I'm probably not buying either, but I want them both. I think they're kind of holds. Yeah, I, I actually listed Tyreek Hill as my cell, but yeah, I, I want to hear I about do, that. I, I do kind of agree with you uh, in that at, at their current ADP, I'm I'm not buying. I mean, Jalen Waddle mm-hmm. again, wide receiver six, Tyreek wide receiver fourteen. A uh, little little bit of a spoiler here: Tyreek Hill in our June ADP, which is nearly wrapped up, moved uh, moved all the way back into the first round. He's the twelfth overall really? player. So, and, you know, maybe that in the back of my mind is what made me list him as, as a sell. Uh, if you can pivot off Tyreek for one of these younger guys, and there are so, so many options, um, this is a, a player who's, Wilson, yeah, right. oh yeah, sure. Are those and guys for sure, right. St. Brown, Higgins, we can go deeper, DK Metcalf, Drake mm-hmm. London, Devontae Smith, JSN, any of those. Um, and based, you know, based on the ADP, we'd, we know ADP is not always a, a trade tool. It's not a one for one um, Two trade suggestion. Tango. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it, it's in the range, right? So even if you're dropping down, even if you're taking Christian Watson and, and a late first or Christian Watson and a couple of seconds, those are the types of deals I would be looking to make when it comes to Tyree kill. So that's why I listed him specifically as a, uh, as a sell, I'm with you on Waddle. He's a hold at six. He's above Alave and St. Brown. I want both of those guys over him. So, but you know, ultimately they're they're in the same tier. We're we're yeah, yeah, picking right. a little bit here. If I'm in a startup, I'm taking St. Brown or Alave above Waddle, and and maybe even considering a couple of these other guys above him as well. 
Um, but I, I, I think they're both in the correct tier right now of wide receivers. It's, it's really just a preference uh, of which one you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it did startle me when you said, I think what you said was he's back in the first round of startups, Tyreek. Yes. If I knew that, you know, maybe he would be more in the sell range if you can get that type of value, but that seems a little rich. I mean, wow. I, I was shocked by that. Uh, so he is, uh, Waddle's actually 11 overall, Tyreek is 12. We've got uh, Jefferson Chase, Bijan, A.J. Brown, Jonathan Taylor, C.D. Lamb. Those are all kind of locked in as the top six mm-hmm. uh, McCaffrey, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, a couple of jets back to back. St. Brown is up to 10 overall and mm. then Waddle and Tyreek just above Chris Olave. So um, yeah, I don't know what it is that pushed Tyreek Hill up uh, nearly a full round. He goes from the uh, uh, 21st overall pick to the 12th. I don't know if his trade value has spiked. Uh, People are excited about Dalvin Cook going there and more points. Right, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm too a good to a news. I mean, I don't know. It it doesn't necessarily make sense that Tyree Kill jump right now, but that's that is what we're seeing. So yeah, based on that, I would be selling if you can. I mean, it, we've said it so much. He should be valued in the same range as Cooper Cup, who's 23 yeah. overall as uh, Devonte Adams, who is uh, 33 overall. So he should be somewhere in that range, not not 12. I actually prefer him to those two for Dynasty. I don't like Tyree. either one of those situations in Vegas yeah. or with the Rams right now. The Rams, yeah. Yeah. Um, but going back to what you said, or, or it, actually what Tyree Kill himself said, I, I do think it was kind of funny that uh, that – that comment about essentially retiring when his contract ends in, in uh, what, two or three years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's 29 now he's about to play his 29 year old season. So two years from now at, at age 31, are we, you know, are, would we really be surprised if he retired and walked away at that point? Of course. I mean, we've seen other, other receivers play beyond that, obviously, but I mean, that's, that's kind of 31, 32. That's kind of when we really see the drop off uh, from even the elite guys talking about Julio Jones and AJ Green recently. So um, I don't think that should be something we're panicking on. And if that no. if that causes if that causes any kind of discount, we haven't. Those comments were several several weeks ago now, maybe a couple months ago. Uh, if that causes any kind of discount, then then I would pivot and be buying uh, Tyree Kill instead of selling. Yeah, and I'm sure he looks at it like, if I'm not the cheetah anymore, if I'm a step slower, yeah. he still would be good, but he's not the scariest guy on the planet anymore, you know? Yeah, totally agree. Matt, that is going to do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Remember to follow the show at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL. And I'm Ryan MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked On Dynasty.